And Bay Area Night Beat begins with breaking news, a heartbreaking tragedy in Oakland after a mother and her young son were killed by a hit-and-run driver. Another person is in the hospital with critical injuries. Good evening. I'm Julia Goodrich. And I'm Brian Hackney. The crash happened shortly after 7 o'clock at 26th and Foothill. We're learning that one person is in police custody. Night Beat's Andrea Nakano is at the scene of the crash with late-breaking developments. Andrea? Yeah, Brian, a sad scene here at 26 and Foothill, where Oakland Fire Department is telling us that the mother and seven year old son have died. A 19 year old is in critical condition. The fire department got a call of a hit and run crash around 7 30 tonight. When they got here, they found three victims of a hit and run. According to Oakland Fire, two of the victims were taken to Highland Hospital. The seven year old was taken to Children's Hospital, but the mother and seven year old son have died. Now, we are told this is a hit and run, but the the Oakland Police Department has a driver in custody. We talked with a couple that lives in an apartment right where this accident happened. They say this is always a busy and dangerous street. I came out high and it was just a hell of people already in the street. And from there, I saw three bodies laying right there. And it just, it just messed up how they, how they got hit and they just got left right there. This is still very much an active crime scene. Police are talking with witnesses, but once again, Oakland Fire confirming that the mother and seven-year-old have died and one driver is in custody. Reporting live in Oakland, Andrea Nakano on the Night Beat. Thanks, Andrea. We've also just learned that a pedestrian who was struck by a car in Mountain View has died. It happened just after 8 tonight near El Camino Real and Shoreline Boulevard. Police say westbound lanes near that intersection are closed and they will remain closed for the next few hours. Police say the driver involved in that collision is cooperating with investigators. A congressman from the East Bay is holding his first hometown rally tomorrow after announcing he's running for president. House Representative Eric Swalwell is holding a rally tomorrow at Dublin High School. And as KPIX 5's Katie Nielsen explains, some local politicians are already saying they're going to run for his seat. The stage is already set, literally, here at Dublin High School, ahead of Swalwell's 2 o'clock rally tomorrow afternoon. And just yesterday, a Hayward City Councilwoman was the first to announce she's running for his seat. Everything I'm doing on a local level in Hayward, I want to bring that to a national level. Aisha Wahab is one of the first Afghan women in the country to be elected to public office, and now she's running for the U.S. House seat, currently occupied by four term Congressman Eric Swalwell. He represents the 15th district, which covers the Tri Valley and parts of Hayward and Fremont. On uh, the congressional level, I think that we need more voices of everyday, regular people like myself. Already, some political experts are comparing Wahab to the popular freshman Democrat Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, who Wahab met last year. She champions the issues that really matter to her and her district, and um, you know I really respect that passion. Wahab says there are three main issues she wants to focus on for the Tri-Valley area, expanding Medicare for all, increasing wages, and reducing student loan debt by providing affordable educational opportunities. The American dream is going to be alive and well, and that's what we're fighting to expand the middle class. She says she's passionate about the issues because of her upbringing. I've always been seen as an outsider. I was in foster care before I could tie my own shoes. She faced an uphill battle to be elected to the Hayward City Council in November of 2018, facing discrimination and threats due to the fact that she is a Muslim Afghan woman, but says none of that will stop her. That is what the American dream promises you, is that regardless of where you come from, what you look like, what you believe in, you can make something of yourself. Congressman Swalwell has not made any official announcements about whether he will seek re-election for his current seat as he runs for president, but the deadline to file isn't until December. Wahad says doesn't matter who else is running, she's staying in the race. On the Night Beat, I'm Katie Nielsen. Well, Swalwell is the most recent of the 18 Democratic presidential candidates to throw his hat into the ring. California Senator Kamala Harris announced her candidacy back in January. Small town mayor also in the race now. Pete Buttigieg of South Bend, Indiana, is officially making his entry in the race tomorrow at a rally that 10,000 people are expected to attend. Buttigieg has already leapt ahead to third place in a recent poll trailing only Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. 
Not to be left out, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker launched a nationwide campaign tour today with a rally that, uh, in the city that started it all. Former mayor of Newark told a friendly crowd of thousands in his home city the country doesn't have time to wait for change and promised to, quote, make justice real for all people. Booker remains in the single digits in the latest polls, but his campaign says that he's in it to win. He's not just in it for a news cycle. President Trump lashed out at Oakland Mayor Libby Schaaf today in a Twitter tirade defending his hardline immigration policies. The president tweeted, so interesting to see the mayor of Oakland and other sanctuary cities not want our currently detained immigrants. If they don't want to serve our nation by taking care of them, why should other cities and towns? To which Oakland Mayor Libby Schaaf fired back, it's time to stop fanning hate and division. I've been consistent and clear. Oakland welcomes all, no matter where you come from. Or how you got here. Well, the White House has come under fire for a plan to transport detained immigrants and asylum seekers to so called sanctuary cities, including San Francisco and Oakland. Critics call the order an unjust and illegal act of revenge against his political opponents. It's not yet clear if or when the plan will go into effect. A town hall on the peninsula where survivors of last year's school shootings in Parkland, Florida attended. Congresswoman Jackie Spear hosted the meeting today. And Hopes of chipping away the gridlock in Washington over gun control. Parkland survivors encouraged by the national wave of student activism that followed the shooting. He says he still feels the effects of that day in February of 2018. That day does still haunt me. It's, I think about it every day. Uh, where I, whenever I'm going somewhere, I'll always look to see where I should go if something bad will ever happen. Congress is in a paralysis as it relates to a number of issues, including gun violence prevention. Gun control activists say that because of the NRA's influence in Congress, they're largely focused on potential reforms at the state level. Two brothers are under arrest tonight in the killing of a woman in Vacaville. Police went to a home on Peregrine, Peregrine Way at about 2.30 this morning. They found a woman dead inside and arrested two men who were standing outside. 42-year-old Marcus Smith, who made the 911 call, is now suspected of murder. His younger brother is being held as an accessory after the fact. Police believe he tampered with evidence before officers arrived. Kevin, a 26-year-old man, also from Vacaville, uh, we learned uh, showed up at the scene uh, after we believe the homicide occurred. Uh, our investigators learned that he was assisting in cleaning up the scene, uh, trying to cover things up. Authorities say the dead woman had been dating the older man. So far, they have not released her name. Today in San Francisco, a hit and run pileup after a foiled car break in adds up to one big mess. A witness told KPIX 5 that several suspects tried to break into his car in the outer Richmond until they realized. He was inside of it. After the witness gave chase, the suspects blew past a stop sign. They crashed into two other cars in a house at 40th and Cabrillo. Surveillance footage caught the suspects zooming around the corner. After the crash, they left on foot and they were quickly apprehended just blocks away. Police say that a student at Sonoma State was drunk when he crashed into a 7 Eleven in Ronard Park. His black Nissan was found pretty much. Inside the store, the 19 year old was treated at the scene and taken to jail. Nobody else was injured. A pilot is recovering tonight after the small plane he was flying crashed in a rural area of Davis. Here's video from the scene. Authorities say the plane took off around 11 a.m. from Yolo County Airport. Shortly after, the pilot crashed into this farm field, landing upside down. The pilot was the only one on board, and when rescuers arrived, they found him stuck inside. Found a gentleman uh, trapped. Extricated him, sent him off to the hospital, and now we're just waiting for the cleanup. There's no word tonight on the condition of that pilot or his name. The plane is registered to Richard L. Stockton of Dixon. The FAA and NTSB are investigating the cause of the crash. A live look now at the Richmond San Rafael Bridge. It is causing some concern tonight because, for the third time this year, drivers on the lower deck reported chunks of concrete. Falling from the upper deck. The CHP is investigating the latest claim made by a driver who says two concrete chunks about the size of baseballs fell on her windshield last night. Now, she says the pieces chipped her windshield. Transportation officials say the bridge is safe, but as they try to get to the bottom of the claims, State Assemblyman Mark Levine says it's time to replace the 63 year old bridge with a new one. 
So instead of spending $900 million in maintenance, perhaps we should start doing the environmental work and the engineering work on a $3 billion replacement that will have fewer maintenance costs, but will also last for over 100 years. The challenge, of course, is securing those funds to build a new bridge. For now, Caltrans will continue to work on the bridge's joints in an effort to prevent more debris from falling. Well, two Bay Area families are now united by one powerful heart. A heart that uh, belongs to an Oakland man who was shot and killed last year. But tonight, his heart is keeping another man alive. And Night Beats' Melissa Kane has the story. It's a meeting no one could have predicted just one year ago. Now, two families are forever linked thanks to Joseph Cox, whose friends called him Sugar Man. I know my son is happy that he was able to carry on still, even with him not being here. Last June, Cox was shot and killed by a stranger in an act of road rage. But the 43-year-old father of five was an organ donor. And Jay Potter was waiting for a heart. It's uh, an amazing thing to be able to meet this wonderful family. Potter, who is 53, suffers from Fabre disease, and it damaged his heart. And thanks to a successful transplant surgery, he now has Cox's heart. So today, wearing a shirt that says, Inside this chest beats the heart of a hero, Potter met Cox's family and let a grieving mother hear her son's heartbeat once again. His heart was very strong, as if he was the one standing up there. His sister, Angela Jones, also says she recognized that sound. She last heard it when Cox was briefly alive in the hospital after the shooting. Because I laid on him and I heard it. And it sounded the same. In it was a message from her big brother. And that's all I could hear in his heart is telling me, don't cry, it's okay. It's going to be okay. And Jones has a message of her own. Everyone should consider being an organ donor. Um, I encourage everyone to go out and do it. Go to DMV. Get that stamp on there because it's a beautiful thing. Megan Potter says she's so grateful that Cox did. It's, it's another level. It's another level of incredible gratitude that people do register and offer to share. Now there are two families, forever changed and happy to hear the heart of the sugar man. So sad he was taken from his family and we grieve for them and their loss, but we celebrate him in our lives every day. On the Night Beat, I'm Melissa Kane.